Welcome back friends, this is Steve, KM9G, and I've got an ICOM 7300 firmware update tutorial video for you. That's a mouthful of things to say. So, what we'll do is we'll switch over to the desktop view where I can share my screen out and share out how to download the files and get the SD card all set up. So, stick around. Oh, and all those buttons down below, like, comment, subscribe, join, membership, ring the bell, click the all button, send a letter to your mother, all those wonderful things that are down there, that would be a great help for making the channel grow and helping more people figure out how this ham radio thing is amazing. All right, we are over here in a private search window. You don't need to be in a private window. I just am because recording on the internet is fun stuff to do. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna search for ICOM, spelling counts, IC7300, firmware update. And we're gonna get back a couple of results. And it doesn't matter if you go to the Japan or to the America site, because if you go to the America site, I think it redirects you to the Japan site anyway. So here we are on the ICOM America website, and this last option, that search, was firmware software. Let's pick firmware software. Up a new tab. Gives us all about the uh, USA information. For some reason it scrolled me down to the bottom, which was nice. But uh, you can see this is the 7300 page. There's a picture of the 7300. Support download tab. The firmware was updated to 2621. And Keep scrolling down, instruction manuals and guides. Keep scrolling down, firmware software. And we have firmware IC7300 version 1.40. Click on that. It's gonna tell us version 1.40 and changes from 1.30. Spectrum scope is improved. Control mode, pop-up screen, fix the edge, et cetera, et cetera. There's a nice document. We'll get into that a little bit later. Update the firmware, thoroughly read section eight on how to use an SD card and section 15 of the manual on how to do the firmware update. I'll show you a little bit of that. And the firmware will be updated to the following versions, 140, 107, 100, and 113. So not everything gets changed, just the main CPU is what it looks like here. File size is 2.73, file type is a zip file. So let's go to bottom of the page, we get this important notice on regarding how to do the downloads. I have fully read and understood. You watched me do it. You know I did it. So let's download it. It wants to save it. So I got a little pop-up box on my screen that you guys can't see about wanting me to save this on my hard disk. I'm going to save this in a location that I know where it is, and I'm going to hit OK, and it has saved. Now we are back to our browsing page. What I want to do while we're here, look up the documentation for the firmware, up, firmware update information. This is a one meg file. So the firmware itself is 2.7 megs and the file size for the documentation is one meg. So it is almost three times larger than the documentation. It's kind of funny. I agree to the terms of downloading the documentation. Let's download that PDF file. So it's gonna pop right up in my PDF viewer, which happens to be my web browser. So here we are taking a look at it. And this is a pretty good document. I took a look over it and I liked what I saw. Lots of stuff in here about the scope operation that's changed, the menu, the preset, uh, the touchscreen display. So let me get this tighter. Hit. So they did change some things on the display as to how that's set up. So here's a guide as to how that is set up. Let's go back to the top and see what else has changed. Band stacking register, key customization, mic key customization, firmware update screen change. Now, log, now, now it recommends that you back up. And it looks like it's actually going to ask you to do the backup first. Go back up to the top. Keyboard entry. Keyboard entry. 
On the full screen keyboard, the capital lock function is not canceled even if you toggle between the alphabet. Okay, that seems like. Back up to the top, what else has changed? Default step in CW, and there's some new CIV or cat control command. So I recommend taking a look at this document and seeing what changes apply to you. There's probably going to be some other subtle little things that they didn't document that are just like quality of life improvements or bug fixes or something along those lines. But this document should detail most of what is in the firmware update for you to take a look at. So I highly recommend looking at that. And go back, grab the full manual. Take a look at section 15. And this is a PDF version of the manual. If you don't have the PDF version of the manual and you're only using the paper manual, you're missing out. The PDF version is pretty amazing because everything is searchable and indexed and highlightable and clickable and all that jazz. So over here, you can see there is a bookmarks page where I can click right on 15 on how to update the firmware. And it takes me right to section 15 of the map. I'll click the get rid of the bookmarks icon. So I can see most of this on the full screen here. And this will tell you what I'm going to show you is how to check your current version, which we did. I'll show you how to get the files ready, where to download them from, how to save them on your disk, how to extract from the zip file, how to move them over to the SD card, how to run through the firmware procedure, and that it will take a couple of minutes to do and that it will restart for you. So take a look at section 15 in the manual. And again, take a look at the uh, PDF page in the manual. And all I did was search for ICOM 7300 firmware update. And this is how I got to these pages and you watched me move through them. So there you go. I would link, but I'm sure that the, uh, the Google is the easier way of finding the, or in my case, the DuckDuckGo. If you haven't used DuckDuckGo, you should use DuckDuckGo. Uh, if you don't know what bangs are, look up what DuckDuckGo bangs are. Uh, Pretty cool thing to do because you can now search for things in DuckDuckGo using other search engines. So that is all there is about that. Let's take a look at extracting that file and getting that onto the SD card where we want it to be. Okay, ICOM 7300 firmware upgrade. Step one is going to be to make a backup. It's almost always the first step is to make a backup of what you're working on. So let's get a backup made. Go into menu. Choose set, and I was already on page two, but if you start at the top and push the down arrow, you get to SD card on page two. Press that, save setting, and new file, and it's gonna give you set and today's date and a file number. I've already done this once, so I'm doing it again for video posterity and for tutorial information to help everybody out at home. So let's press enter, save the file, yes. And it's completed. There's not a whole lot of settings on my radio. It won't take very long. I can't imagine it would take very long for anybody else either. And that is how we do the backup. Okay, the next thing we're going to need to do is unmount the SD card and remove it from the radio. So there's an unmount button. Unmount OK. Yes. Unmount is completed. Now we're ready to roll. Let's pull the card out. And we need to go put the firmware on it. Okay, so in the previous segment of the video, we downloaded the firmware file onto our computer. And I happen to have a ham folder. I'm sure everybody has a ham folder on the computer. And if not, why don't you? Um, so this is my ham folder here on the screen. And I have a folder in here for gear. Let me look in gear. And under gear, I have radios. And under radios, I have ICOM. And under ICOM, I have ICOM 7300. And here's where I downloaded that firmware file, the 7300.140.zip. This is Mac OS. Mac OS makes it really easy to deal with zip files. All I need to do to extract this zip file is double click on it. And it extracts itself. There it is. I need to take this file and I need to drag it to my SD card, which I plugged into my SD card reader. And it shows up over here on the left hand side as untitled. I'm dragging that down and I'm going to drop it onto untitled. It's now copied itself over. Go into Untitled. This is not where it goes. If you read your manual, um, you know that it doesn't go in this folder. It actually goes into the IC7300 folder. So I'm just going to move it into that folder. And now 
it's in the folder with all of the other IC7300 settings. It's actually really nice that ICOM put this in here. If you ever wanted to use this SD card for anything other than this radio, SD cards are cheap. I just put this SD card in my radio and I leave it. So now it's in the right folder. Let's get back over to the radio and get the settings updated. All right, so now we are back from putting the firmware image onto the SD card. So we need to put our SD card into our radio, put that in the SD card slot down there at the bottom. And the first thing that I wanna do before I do my upgrade is I wanna check my current versions, menu, set, others, information, version. There's my version numbers, main 130, front 101, DSP 107, data 100, and FPGA 113. All right, now we know what those numbers are. Back out. So we get to the main menu, we choose SD card, we choose firmware update. There's a little warning here, let me read it to you because my screen's a little blown out from sunlight. Updating the firmware is very risky. If you make a mistake, the ICOM 7300 may not operate properly and repair it. ICOM Inc. in Japan may be the only way to fix it. I really hope they could fix it in America without having to ship it all the way. You undertake the updating of the firmware at your own risk and responsibility. Please refer to the firmware download homepage and or the instruction manual for the correct procedures in updating the firmware. Page 2. Also, all previously set conditions, the memory contents, etc., will be lost when making a firmware update. Making a backup file of program contents and settings onto the SD card before updating is recommended. You agree to all of the above. I agree to all of the above. I did a little bit of soul searching and I decided I agree with it. So, after you do some careful soul searching, you can agree as well. There's the file that we downloaded, 7300-140. And if your soul searching leads you to not agree, then by all means do. I picked that file and it says updating the firmware. It will take approximately one minute. After updating, the IC7300 will automatically restart. Never turn off the 7300 until after the frequency to screen is displayed. Also, never remove the SD card. Do you wish to start the firmware update? Yes. You have to hold that yes button down for a bit. And it goes through the process and this is what it looks like. Update is complete and we're automatically rebooting. There you have it. So some things have changed on the display a little bit. Menu, let's go in while we're here and settings, go down to SD card, do load setting is the first option. Pick the most recent file, which is today's date version two. Load all. New ref adjust setting will be saved. Sure thing. Great. And now it wants me to restart it manually. I turn it off. Turn it on. And what I am most interested in here is the new settings for FT8. So I will choose menu. And you see that there's now a new button down here at the bottom too. And FT8 preset. Let's go into FT8. Load the preset memory. Yes. And unload it also when you're done. Excellent. So that's how easy it is to do the firmware update. Not too scary if you ask me. Looks like we are back in business. All right, folks, there you have it. That's the ICOM 7300 firmware update. That was uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Take the file from the website that you got by searching your favorite search engine. Mine happens to be DuckDuckGo. Stick it on your hard disk, extract the zip file, put it into a special folder on the SD card, put the SD card into your radio, then run through the firmware update procedure on the menu. Probably the hardest thing that I had to do was hold down that, yes, I wanna start my firmware update button for a little bit longer than I would have normally done. Everything else on the touch screen, you just press and press and press and press and it's good. This one you have to long press and then it will finally take off and do it. So if you run into that, you just haven't hit the button long. You saw the update happen in real time. so. That's how long it takes. Not long at all. Best of luck to you in your upgrade. And uh, mine didn't have any problems with it or else I would have showed you what the problems were. So it should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, again, they do warn you that it is all at your own risk and you might have to send it back to Japan to get it fixed. Pretty sure that you can send it back to the America's ICOM Repair Center and have them fix it. But I don't know because I haven't broken mine.
Let me know how your firmware update goes, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for being awesome.